Hello everybody, this is Dr. Novak. Well, it's finally here, and just one more day. And in one more day, everything changes. And fall will be here and summer will be over. During this time of the year, fall and winter is when the aquarium hobby actually grows. It becomes the busy time of the year especially around winter time, Christmas time, and uh, that's when the aquarium hobby grows. People start thinking about fish, you're indoors more, you can't go out, it's too cold, you're up north, it could be, you know, 20 below zero, and people start thinking about aquariums, our pets, our family projects, and this is normal, it happens every single year. This becomes the busy time of year. In fact, uh, usually in October, they used to have shows in Chicago where you would go to and for pet shows, basically, you know, they had everything there, fish, you know, cats, dogs, aardvarks, whatever animal you have. Plus, you know, you can buy there also. And it was always neat. It was an ambiance, you know, fall time, the leaves are falling, you may have rain, light rain, you, uh, it's a cloudy day. Uh, so what else is there to do except go to, you know, fish shows or pet stores and that's why it becomes so popular. So in order to get a jump on everything, because you may be, if you're watching this, you may be new to the channel or you may old, be old to the channel, a subscriber. Uh, you may be thinking that, well, I want to replace that little bitty tank I have. You know, you're biting at the bit for PetSmart to put their 75-gallon tank and stand on sale so you can pick one of those bad boys up and graduate from the little 10 or 20-gallon tank to a nice big, you know, tank as a hobbyist because, you know, when they go on sale, I think they're like half price maybe, but... Uh, <clears throat> That's what everybody's waiting for. You may be one of those hobbies who, ah, nah, I, I don't have to do anything. I'm just fine. But a lot of hobbyists during this time of the year, they think, well, it's time for maintenance. I can do a major maintenance because I've neglected my aquarium, you know, during the summer when I'm busy. The weather will start changing very quickly now. It's uh, going to be October and just a, another week, week and a half. It's going to be October. Tomorrow starts fall. So we're all maybe thinking that, hey, can I put up another tank? Does it have to be a tiny one? Can it be a big one? But you know what I mean. It's that time of year. Or maybe you're thinking about a major breakdown. Uh, you know, the tank's not doing well. It's a good time of year to go in there and, and break the thing down when I, I got plenty of time. Christmas vacation's coming up. I got to have something to do, you know. I used to like that time of year, you know, because that's when I would do a lot of my maintenance, if I had to do any maintenance or anything, was during fall and winter. And of course, as soon as summer came, springtime came, you know, you want to get back outside again, so you neglect your aquariums again. But anyway, uh, so in order to, I was thinking, in order to prepare you for what's coming up, or what you may be thinking about, I decided to get some videos done on, uh, well, things you may want to start buying. You may start thinking that, yeah, I've had this little tank and I want to get me 75 gallon or 55 gallon or whatever, and I maybe want to change it over. Maybe you're using a uh, uh, set up your aquarium and it's not doing as well as you would like. It may be not bad, but maybe it's time for a change, something to do. Maybe. You're, you're going to move on. So in these next few videos I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be showing you uh, just that. That uh, how, if you want to make a plenum in your aquarium, and uh, there's a guy named Ralph that I spoke to who uh, is a subscriber to my channel. But I'll give you a little bit of background ground about Ralph. Uh, he lives up north in one of the colder states 
and he was a professional aquarium builder. He had his own business, aquarium business. Uh, he would set up tanks, saltwater tanks for people, and uh, he built huge, huge saltwater tanks and everything for people. In fact, he even said he, he you know, would do celebrities tanks and put bids in to do their tanks. Uh, one of the people I remember is he was talking about Howard Stearns, you know. So and he knew all the people, Julius Sprung, all the all the in people of the aquarium trade, he was in there with them, right in the trenches with them. Uh, selling his product, him and his partner and everything else and doing maintenance and had that business. He does a lot of aquaponics right now but so he decided that uh, he has a friend he got a good deal on a 225 gallon aquarium which I think is 24 by 72 by 30 inches you know good size aquarium and he built a stand himself he got the aquarium at a real good price and so he built the stand. He made sure it was absolutely level. Well, of course, if he built aquariums for people and did custom work for people, of course he knows how to build stands correctly and everything else. So he has that advantage, the tools and everything to do it. And he called me and talked to me. And he said, you know, I've been looking at all the channels. And he said, basically, I did salt water. And now I thought, well, it's I'll do fresh water. Let's see what they're doing compared to what we did with salt water. Let's, let's see the innovation that's out there for freshwater aquariums. Remember, this guy owned a business and everything, so he's been around the block a few times. So he looked at all the channels. He said he, you know, searched through all the channels, see what they had to say. And then he came across my channel, Ralph did, and he said, you know, everything made a lot of sense. It just made so much sense about how fluids have to move through substrates, bacteria, the nitrogen cycle, uh, how he was watching other channels. And, and he said, right now, he's not in that stage where uh, he has to watch a channel and, and keep learning about fish. You know, he doesn't have to go through that stage. Basically, he wants to set it up and get it right so it will last for years. And he, he needs to have a good biological filter, and that's what he's looking at. The guy's a professional, so he knows what he's looking for as a professional. So I'm going to be showing you his build. Now, he has this 225, but he also has a customer who has a tank that's been set up for quite a while, I think maybe 13 years or whatever, and that's a 135-gallon tank, and he's going to tear that tank down for a customer and redo it, completely redo it. He said it's, it's not looking very good now. It's, it's getting old, and, and it needs to be redone, and the customer wants it redone now. And that's what happens. Tanks get old, and, and sometimes you may get tired of them, right? And you just say, hey, it's time... It's time for a revamp, you know, it's like remodeling your house, you know. The house is okay, but you're just tired of it, and it's time to remodel. Throw some fresh paint on, maybe do some woodwork, stuff like that. Redo the bathroom, redo the kitchen, whatever. But that's what, what it basically is. We're, he's doing a redo of his tank. Once again, he's going to use a plenum. So in these videos, I'm going to be showing you step-by-step step what he's doing. He's been sending me pictures. And right now he's on a hold because he's waiting for a pump. And I will explain to you what he's getting, how he's going to do it. I will show you pictures of, of how he's going to do the build. So in case you're thinking of the same thing, of buying a big tank or small tank or whatever, and the supplies he's using are supplies that are readily available to everyone without, uh, you know, going to Amazon. So you go to your local hardware store and you can pick up everything you want right there. One city, go to a hardware store, fill up your cart and leave. You've got all the tools and all everything you need to build a plenum. 
And I think that's great because now you don't have to go on Amazon and try to find an under gravel filter. You don't have to. Plus, you have the enjoyment of building it yourself, which is quite easy. You came up with some great ideas. We talked about it. Very simple ideas on how to make a plenum. Very simple. Anyone could do it. Uh, and that's what we'll go over in this video. So stay tuned. So as you can see, this is the aquarium. It's an Aquian aquarium of 225 gallons. So it's a good size aquarium. And we were kind of talking about aquariums and we, he remembered the uh, old aquarium, some of the old manufactured aquarium, like Oceanic and stuff. They're all gone. A lot of aquariums, there's not very many aquarium manufacturers out there unless they have specialized aquariums, which if you go get a specialized aquarium, you're going to pay big money for it. But uh, the aquarium, the stand he made himself, and in the upcoming videos, uh, we will carry on from this, and uh, I will show you the supplies. And <clears throat> another thing of it is, uh, there's nothing special. He's just going to be using uh, Seachem uh, fluorite. He went out and bought, uh, instead of kitty litter, he went to a tractor supply house and bought oil dry, uh, which is good. And uh, he's just going to be using Seachem fluorite substrate, which uh, he's going to cap off everything with that because he likes the way it looks. And, oh yeah, that's right. We got talking and... Now, he's done this a long time, professionally built aquariums and tanks and setups for people. And once again, conversation went on to sand. I said, well, a lot of people buy sand. You have a big tank. And, it's, and he said, no, 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 no sand. He said, sand compacts. He says he's, he's dealt with sand. And he said, no way he uh, is going to go with sand. Uh, sand is just... Uh, too many problems with sand. He said, I'm not going with that. I'm going with a, a substrate that has a bigger uh, granule size to the substrate. And I said, oh, that's perfectly fine. But, you know, it's nice to hear from somebody who, who's done it professionally what they think. And he said, no, no sand. This is, it's uh, not not for his plenum or anything. He said, it's, it's not going to happen. He's using larger substrate. So anyhow, that's it for this particular video. In the next videos, we will go step by step of um, what he will be doing. And I'll give you, uh, to show you how he set it up. You're going to be surprised. You're really going to be amazed how simple he's made everything and done everything. Uh, I can tell you right off the bat, you're going to need some uh, uh, wire cutters. You're going to need a hot glue gun if you don't have one. A hot glue gun's going to come in handy. And uh, in my next video, I'll, I'll show you what you need to buy all at the hardware store. You do not have to go to Amazon. But a hot glue gun is going to do you good in case you're thinking about it You need and you don't have one. Well, you can pick one up. And, of course, you're going to need some snips, wire snips. And I'll explain to you in the next video why. So until then, this is Dr. Novak. Thank you for watching and happy fish keeping. And don't forget to subscribe to keep up with all the new information I'm going to be giving and showing you what Ralph is doing with his aquarium. Okay? And until next time, happy fish keeping.